Hello there, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Snips by Kelly. I'm Kelly and tonight we're going to continue on in the Skylark series and create a two page layout using the Skylark series to continue on. I recently posted this process video creating the layout shown here, which is layout one in the Skylark series where we focused on getting lots and lots of photo opportunities without sacrificing the decorative element. So we were able to get six photos here on the right, three photos within the flip flap and five photos in the film strip for a total of 14 photos. And as you can see, we added lots of wonderful elements and I described in great detail the entire supply list in the last video and explained in depth how I created all of the little bits. So you can uh, check that out. I'll link that in the description and I will also post all of the supplies and materials used in the description this time as well. So tonight we're focusing on Ramsey Kate. Yes, more grandchild photos. And we're going to get a couple photos in the left flip flap as well as a full journaling um, uh, area and then four photos on the right. I'm not quite sure that we'll get all four. I think we will. We're going to start with a square of the quatrefoil um, pattern here and the vintage Skylark pattern. And it was nine and a fourth by nine and a fourth and I cut it on a diagonal. And you've seen this pattern many, many times. We're going to use that as a transition piece and add lots of little wonderful elements to it and add a couple strips to the right um, and to the left on each page respectively. We're gonna start by drawing a really light pencil line where the diagonal goes because we're going to do some stenciling. As I described in the previous video, Skylark, the Skylark bundle comes with this wonderful stencil. We're going to use some of our new jade ink and we're going to create a wonderful visual line and we're going to stencil some of the leaves on that stencil and come back in with some lagoon ink and stencil some flowers. Now only little bits and pieces of what we're stenciling is going to show through and that's what what's going to make it interesting is adding those layers and clusters um, and all of that visual interest underneath um, another layer that it so that it just peeks out and it creates interest because of the skylark bird that's embedded right in the pattern paper in the upper left that is lagoon i wanted to pull in some lagoon flowers and with some inking as well as some lagoon flowers from the isabella stamp and thin cut that i described in a previous video uh, and it is still available on the shop site as well but many many of my paper crafters out there already have that in their arsenal and in their stash. So I'm just finding some bits within the stencil, some of the bits that are leaves only all the way through to the tip, and then some of the bits that actually have flowers on the tips. So that when I come back in with the lagoon blending brush, then I'll be able to add those flowers. And it's okay if it isn't perfect if there are some little bits that um, where you get little extra pieces it's going to add interest and it's going to be blended all over the top with our lime aid ink so um, it's going to smooth it all over there's going to be lots of bits covering it it's going to be just fine don't worry about it being perfect that's not what the stenciling is about the stenciling is about adding um, added interest to a background and it's a great technique that is a low cost technique as well when you have quite a few stencils in your stash you can even create stencils on your Cricut that are the throwaway type that you create out of paper but close to my heart has been super into stencils lately and we have such great collections we have 12 by 12 stencils we have card front stencils and there's all different kinds of patterns and shapes 
Another great thing is adding word stamps to stenciling. We have a couple really great ones. One that's coming to mind is our Parisians, Parisian stamp set. Um, and I love the words in that stamp set. It just has some vintagey images with words embedded in it. I thought about pulling it into this, but I'm already pulling in quite a th few things from our stash. So I thought I would limit my supply list here. I'm coming in with a sponge dauber to do the florals just because then I can be a little bit more specific and uh, the blending brushes are a little bit more general and broad and this little smaller tip of the sponge really kind of helps me fine-tune some of those flowers a little bit they're going to be fuzzy on the edges and that's the way that I want them I'm only going to do about three or four of them just to add that little pop of color and I think when all is said and done maybe only two or three of them show um, but it's kind of hard to tell when you're placing your pieces you can also wait and do some of the sponging of this after you've placed your pieces if you want a little bit more of that lagoon to show so Ramsey Kate has an unlikely color for this color palette but I chose to use Ramsey's photos as the accent so we're using so many blues and greens and browns that the color in Ramsey's dress just accentuates those greens and those neutrals and I love the way it makes her photos pop because the neutrals are in the background and then her dress stands out so boldly. So now we're coming over the top of the stenciling with our Lime Aid ink. Both Lime, Lime Aid and Jade are new colors this year. And we're just gonna blend all that together and then we're going to add that triangular piece over the top and I'm opting to add that triangle piece with foam tape. You don't have to, but I like adding the foam tape so I can layer over and under. Most of the, layer, most of the layering is going to be over. So if you prefer to have things flush, go ahead and put that triangle um, flush in that corner. It's so pretty. It's such a gorgeous pattern with the words embedded in there, the sky lark embedded in there there's some little banners and some little extra bits that add interest that are embedded right into the paper um, I'm going to be putting some photo mats under this flip flap but in general I'm getting the placement there and I love that we're going to do some treatments on that journal four by six journaling piece so inside the flip flap I have the two four by six vertical photos and then I've cut a piece of four by six white daisy to go in there as well so that I can do some treatments on that we're going to do some stenciling and some stamping and we're going to add some little fussy cut stamped piece from the Skylark stamp set and then we're going to um, um, uh, be able to add my journaling to that. I actually don't add my journaling because I cannot find my black Le Pen. And that is my all time favorite. And it has, um, it just grows legs because my grandchildren were here last weekend for um, Thanksgiving and they, um, they, they, they know that there are certain things in grandma's studio that they can use and certain things that they can't, but it's disappeared. I'm not throwing them under the bus because I lose things every day, but I decided to wait for my journaling. I need to get a couple spares of the black Le Pen. It journal writes so nice. I love it. So I didn't add my journaling, so shame on me, but I promise I will as soon as I find my black Le Pen. Okay, so as you saw, I repeated our performance on the stenciling and the blending on the lower right, and I used the opposite pattern on the back of the vintage bird pattern, which is that... I always say it funny, but is the quatrefoil. I don't know why. Um, it, I'm sure shape people totally understand why it's called that. I am distressing the edges of my papers here. So I have a five and a half by seven and a half black, and then a five and a fourth by a seven and a fourth lagoon, and then um, a four and a fourth by, let's see, a four and a half, excuse me, by six and a half 
toffee and I've distressed all of those and I've added a little toffee ink to the edges of that and then my actual photo mat will be a four and a fourth by six and a fourth white uh, daisy that I'll be mounting that flip flap on or that I already mounted that flip flap on. Now for the photos on the right there's so much that we can do. Uh, we can rearrange these in quite a few ways. I want more of that transitional um, um, the transitional uh, uh, stenciling to show um, but I also know that some of it's going to be covered up in the center and that's going to make it pretty as well so I think I'm going to do the four by four and the three by four on the top and then a three by four and a four by four on the bottom and as far as the photo mats on that I have lagoon four and a f just a quarter of an, an inch larger on all the lagoon and um or excuse me an eighth inch larger on all the lagoon and a fourth inch larger on the black so for example for the four by four I I have four and an eighth by four and an eighth lagoon and four and a fourth by four and a fourth black for the three and a, three by four photos i have a uh, three and an eighth by four and an eighth lagoon and a three and a fourth by four and a fourth black on each of those now i'm just going to choose a leaf pattern and I'm going to lightly use the jade ink in the right hand corner and I love this word stamp in the Skylark collection that says that you are my um, you are my best memory or you are my greatest memory you are my favorite memory excuse me um, and I love it and I thought I could stamp that um, in bold uh, intense black ink and then stamp it a couple more times in second generation ink just to create a really interesting corner there so I have added the leaf in jade I've rubbed over the top of it with a blending brush with lime aid now I'm adding you are my favorite memory in intense black and then I'm stamping again second generation below that and then I'm stamping off and stamping again second generation above that it's so pretty it's so soft and it's so pretty and I'll do my journaling in the middle and I'll tell a lovely story about our little Ramsey Kate. Ramsey Kate was our youngest grandchild for quite a while, three years I think she got to be the baby and now we have Waylon James and Ramsey is actually already five. I did do a few um, uh, just focal pages with her photos here that she's taken which I believe are her Oh gosh, nine month photos. I'm guessing I have to look that up before I do my journaling. And I did a few focal feature layouts with it, but I actually didn't do the rest of them. And so the photos of um, Avery Jean and Hattie Elaine from the previous layout and these photos here are all from the same time frame. So now I've added that into the flip flap. I added a couple fussy cut dragonflies. I stamped the dragonflies on on um, uh, one in Lagoon and one in Intense Black and then rubbed it with Lime Aid, rubbed the wings with Lime Aid. Now, I start to get excited here because I keep trying to use this wonderful title here, um, the Limeade title to the right, and I end up pulling it off because I forget again that I actually made some cute little transition strips and I forgot that I made them. They're off to the side. And so I'm kind of looking at titles. I love the idea of it's the little moments that make life big. I love the idea of when you open the flip flap, you see the rest of the title and the arrow is pointing down to Ramsey Kate. I think that's adorable. I think it's a great play on a sticker from the sticker sheet. Um, and I think I can decorate around it with some leaves and some flowers from the Isabella stand and thin cut collection so if you're just tuning in on this video I went in great detail on all the little bits that I have in my junk gypsy tray I used uh, I think four thin cuts from my stash but all four of those are still available now so many of my paper crafters have those already and so I like to try to pull those out and use those again and again so that they get great use out of those I'm considering pulling in 
this doily from our Hope and Kindness, the Fancy Doily set, which also is one of those that I was talking about just a few minutes ago that's still available on the shop site. I love the idea of maybe doing a little inking on the white one, uh, just distress inking maybe with a little bit of Lagoon, but of course I scratched that idea because I forget that I have strips that are going to go to the right, and so I'll discover that here in the video real soon. Um, I made some transition strips and I have these Isabella um, flowers that are left over uh, and again I described in detail my inking techniques on that just rubbing super simply with a blending brush with nothing fancy you could actually add some clear shimmer brush that would add a lot to it I did not do that on the previous video but you could totally do that as well and just rubbed in the center with some blending brushes some of the flowers are limeade some of them are lagoon and then I concentrated the limes and the leaves with um, jade and so I'm going to build a little border on that transition of the pattern paper piece and the stenciling and it's so pretty when you do that I've used techniques like this in the past it's been a year or two but I've used this I believe I use this technique with one of our fan favorites um I could be wrong, but I think I used it in Serenity. I like to use this a lot when we have large florals. When we're given large thin cut florals, it's just a go-to layout that's gorgeous that I gravitate back toward um, what's old is new again. I gravitate back toward my own um, workshops and layouts for inspiration and ideas, and they never turn out the same way twice, um, but the inspiration is there, and you'll see that general theme um, you could do this with smaller squares in the corner or smaller triangles in the corner. It would be super pretty to do this as a square where the inner part of the square is cut out as a frame and you're doing the flower clusters all the way around the inner uh, part of a frame. That would be so pretty. You could do other shapes that you um, that you follow around with larger die cuts but these Isabella uh, scrapbooking stamp and thin cuts florals in it was were perfect the first time that I used these Isabella florals I had them be lemons because lemons was a strong theme throughout that workshop um, and I'm having them be limes this time because that's um that's our our um that's the beauty we can make it whatever we want to with our inks and I love that so I I start to try to want to pull in black accents. I really wanted the black accents to anchor some of these colors and I use some of the sprigs and leaves but they're too large and I decide that I want to come back in with the black die cut shapes that I've added. So in the original workshop in the um, Skylark bundle the accent shapes are the um, craft die cut shapes and I've just substituted the black die cut shapes exactly the same shapes just a different color now the wooden shapes would go just fine but I've decided to add the um those die cuts in because they just add the pops of black really add to these greens and blues so I created this and it's one inch by I believe 11 and a half inches it's actually a film strip but I actually took all the holes out of it using the contour tool just to create just a different unusual element instead of a regular zip strip off to the side so I backed it with the chevron limeade paper and then I have two lagoon strips here that I think they started out as um, three quarters by about 11 and a half and then I've torn the edges and I've just distressed the whole strip with toffee ink and then now I'm going back in and distressing the torn edges and I'm just going to toss those strips to sort of provide a transition between the two pages and finish off the edge over there and draw in some more pattern. The only pattern paper in this whole layout is that nine and a fourth by a nine and a fourth inch square in the upper corner which is also lovely that you um, can stretch your pattern paper I didn't have to use too much pattern paper um, just basically a gutted frame in the in the first layout so it's kind of nice to stretch these patterns and we're going to be doing five layouts we're actually don't gasp but we're going to be doing a single page 
And that is something I don't do very often, but I got to the end and I had just teeny tiny scraps left. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to do a single focal page with, um, I actually only had about one photo left that I wanted to use. So I don't get to do that very often because for my paper crafters, they are always begging for decorative pages that have lots of photo opportunities. So it's not too often that I do a single page with only one photo because I'm always stretching and getting more photo opportunities. But this one is nice. I mean, it doesn't have 14 like the previous layout, but you could actually get three in that left flip flap. Um, I opted to do my private journaling in that and only have two, but if you had three in that, four on the right side, we do have four by four flip flaps and three by four flip flaps, so you could totally add flip flaps to the right. Um, and so you could stretch the number of photos on this one as well. But I usually, in general, like a layout to have a minimum of five. And I love it when I can get seven or more. And getting 14 on that last one was incredible. So we're working with six today, so that's not too bad. I actually don't have any more photos of Ramsey Kate in this little outfit. So it actually, the number worked out perfect. So I'm bringing in some of those Isabella Lee. I actually trimmed off one of those flowers and there's not even an eighth of an inch of that flower left but I wanted to show you how I like to use even the littlest of tiny bits to make it look like it's a fuller layer that you have more layers in it than you actually do and then I wanted to add the lagoon um uh um, doily from our fancy doilies just half of that we use the other half on the previous layout and I'm coming back in again showing how I still want to use that title piece I love that title piece but I think it's going to serve me much better to just use a couple little pieces from the sticker sheet we have a little um, tab here with a really cute um, chevron arrows in it and then we have the lagoon sticker to pull the lagoon back in that is called dream which I think simple right there is gonna less is gonna be more for that I am gonna bring out some of those die cut shapes because I want to add just a few little bits I want to add some little leaf flourishes in there and um, play around with those a little bit just for little bitty pops of black. I think the black adds so much. Sometimes I love, love, love a workshop, but there's just something flat about it and I can't ever put my finger on it. I have no training. I have no expertise. I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to colors and things like that, except for everything that I've learned from close to my heart, which they are the best teachers. But there's something when you look at it and you're like, it needs something, it needs something. And when I was looking at Skylark, I loved everything about it, but something was flat. And that tells me that I need a bold grounding color. I need something bolder. I do have a tendency to lean toward bolder. A lot of the reasons I think that I do has more to do with my photos than anything. It also has to do with um, promoting and photo taking, which sounds crazy crazy, but they show up better in pictures. We can have some of the most gorgeous pastels, and until people see them in person, they're not um, understanding how gorgeous they are because they're not popping off the page. There's nothing grounding in that to help them pop off the page, and so it's kind of unfair when you have gorgeous pastels. Beachy themes can be that way. They can be so soft and so gorgeous, but they don't show up quite as well well um, because the um, the grounding color isn't helping it to pop off the page so now I'm coming back in with just some of those little bits I'm getting happy I'm loving the way it's turning out I love that completely opposite color in Ramsey's photos as an accent color you you know your photos whatever your accent color is it doesn't have to be that coral there are so many things that are going to pop against the greens and browns and if you have a little bit of nature some greenery some leaves some different things like that in the background of your photos they are go going to go absolutely perfect with this collection I love it I think it just drew out the gorgeous colors in the collection that are unable to be seen 
typically when you view the patterns separately. I love it so much. I'm so happy that you were um, uh, sharing time with me today and that you spent time with me today. I hope you love it. I hope you're going to tune in to layout number three that won't be too long here. We're going to continue on for layout three in the Skylark series. Hey, hit subscribe, like, share, follow, shoot me a comment. Those are the things that keep me motivated is when I hear from all of my viewers out there, it keeps me motivated to keep the videos coming on YouTube and your encouragement, your comments, your shares, and your likes go a long way for me in keeping my YouTube channel going. I just appreciate it so much. I hope you love layout number two in the Skylark series and you're looking forward to layout number three. If you miss layout out number one. Again, I'll link that in the description and you can hop on back and check layout number one out. It's certainly going to be one of my favorites. Happy scrapping and happy, happy Skylark. See you soon. Bye-bye.